Hey everybody, welcome back to the Honeycrisp Mitten Sew Along. Today is all about grading between sizes on the pattern. I'll be answering a grading question posted by Trulinen, and I really hope that's how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry if it was done incorrectly. Now, she's making a pair of mittens that need to be extra long in length, small in width, and 2XS at the wrist. So, I'll be going over how to lengthen the mittens as well as how to add an extra size to the pattern since it does not go as small as 2XS. Now, before we begin, you're going to need some supplies. Obviously, your pattern pieces. Here I'm just showing the palm pattern piece, but you'll also need to make changes to the cuff and uh, the back of hand and quite possibly the finger and thumb tips. Next, scissors, tape. I like some good invisible or matte tape as it's easier to write on than glossy tape. A nice sharp pencil, rulers, of course, clear ruler is especially helpful um, and optional but useful are French curves or hip curve. And then you're also going to want a scrap piece of paper. First off, how do you add an extra size? Well, let's take a look at the pattern. Notice how at the wrist length cuff it gets, let's see, about a quarter inch smaller between each size. And it's actually just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. So to make a two excess, we'll measure up just shy of a quarter of an inch. In three places is pretty good. All right, we've got those marked. Now I'm gonna take a French curve, optional, but very useful and connect our markings. Okay, there we go. Now, you're going to be doing this uh, to the entire rest of the pattern piece. If you need to make your entire mittens, you know, 2XS or 4XL, whatever. Um, but the important thing to note is that the pattern does not get uniformly larger or smaller all the way around, meaning while it gets a quarter of an inch smaller or larger here at the cuff, it gets about an eighth of an inch smaller over here at the sides, and then it tapers all the way down to nothing, no difference here at the very tips of the fingers. So because it would be pretty tedious to measure all around every little bit here, I'm just going to measure in a few places. All right, that's about a quarter of an inch, a bit less there, so I'll mark that. And then here it's about three eighths of an inch difference between the sizes. So let's go for three eighths of an inch. And then up here, you'll see that it's okay, one eighth of an inch between the small and extra small, but between the three XL and two XL, it's a little bit less than uh, one eighth of an inch. So. For my markup here, I'm going to make it just a wee bit bigger than one eighth of an inch difference. And if I were making a 4XL, I would make it just a touch less than an eighth of an inch difference for grading out to that larger size versus grading into the smaller size. All right, so now we've got those. We can just connect the lines again. And because I don't need the two excess around the entire mitten, I'm not going to continue up here. But I will start making the changes for the other side. So, all right, it's about a quarter of an inch difference here. Mark that off and get another one closer to three-eighths of an inch there. And connect the lines again. Now the last thing you'll need to do is add on these notches. See, there are all these notches right along here. Now let's see. The notches are about a quarter of an inch uh, apart from each other. So let's make the notch for the extra, extra small, a quarter of an inch up from the notch of the extra small. There you go. 
So now I'm going to take a highlighter. You don't need to use one, but for demonstration purposes, it makes it easier to see. And I'm just going to highlight what we just did. Okay. Extra, extra small notches and the cuff length. There we go. There's our 2XS. So, you know, like I was saying up here, um, with making a 4XL, you do the same thing down here, all around the sides and everything. The important thing to keep in mind, though, is to see how the thumb shifts. So if you're making a smaller size, see how as they get smaller, they shift, the thumbs shift closer to the fingers, whereas the bigger sizes, the thumb shifts away from the fingers. All right. Now you've got that done, let's move on to lengthening the pattern. So when you were measuring your hand length, you measured from, see this bone right here that protrudes from the wrist, you measure just above it to the tip of your middle finger. So this is the part of the hand that we will need to be lengthening. You don't need to lengthen past here. Um, so let's look at our pattern. All right, we're gonna be lengthening up here, not below here. If we lengthen too far up, we'll get into the thumb and you'll be lengthening the thumb too. Not good. <laughs> um, now, if we grab a pattern for the back of the hand, you'll notice how it curves, it turns in here, it makes a corner. Well, that's the narrowest part. What do you know? It lines up with the wrist, which is the narrowest part. You'll note on the pattern piece, it says align notch with the corner in the back hand. So these notches match up to the corner over here, meaning the notches mark the wrists, which will be the smallest part. So we are going to uh, make some cuts to the pattern. Uh, but when we do this, we don't want to mess with the wrists. So we're going to cut right above here. Um, I'm going to go about an inch or so above the notches that we made for the wrists. And what I'm doing is making sure that the line I'm drawing is perpendicular to this grain line. All right, we've got that. Now we're just going to cut the pattern piece in two. And that's the beauty of PDF patterns. You know, if things don't go well with cutting, you can just print out another copy. Easy. And if you're using a paper pattern, you can just trace off a copy first before you get into cutting or anything. Now, getting back to lengthening the pattern, there are two ways to go about this. Amy of So Well has a great method for doing this, which involves taking some measurements. The final pattern uh, is probably a little more precise and you can go to her great tutorial at sewell.wordpress.com. But if you want a brainless way to do this, uh, you'll need to cut your pattern piece once more. So it'll be in three pieces. Now, before we start though, you'll only want to use this method if you're making the wrist length mittens. For forearm or upper arm length mittens, you want to use Amy's method that involves sliding your pattern piece down a distance that is the difference of the size wrist that you're going to cut and the size wrist of the length that you need. Um, now that that's been said, onward. So first you'll slice your pattern perpendicular to the grain line like we just did up here. Then you'll also cut it out along the cuff, the size of the cuff that you need, not the size of the length. So got these three pieces, grab your scrap paper and get a tape in. So we're going to secure this top piece, which has the fingers. And then we're going to line up the rest of the pieces as if they hadn't been cut. Try and be pretty precise with this. Okay. Now, do not tape this middle piece here. Tape the bottom piece which is this triangular section. 
Okay, that leaves oops, this middle piece free to float about all loosey-goosey. So what you're going to do for this demonstration is we need the large length. Here's the large. I'll just highlight it to make it easier for you to see. This is how long the hand itself needs to be. So since this is about where the wrist is, we're going to slide the pattern piece down to the large cutting line. Now, very important is to make sure that your grain lines match up perfectly. That way everything will be aligned um, and your pattern will come out, you know, looking well and instead of all skewed to one side or something. So now you've got that measurement down, you can, or once you've slid the pattern piece down, you can tape it. Now this kind of looks a bit busy and difficult to see what's going on, so I'm just going to remove that. There you go. Now one more thing that was needed with this alteration is, all right, we've got the 2XS wrist, we've got the long length, and it needs to be extra small in width. So let's see. Here's the extra small. We need it to be extra small up here, but extra, extra small down here. It's already the long length. So we're going to grade out or grade down from the extra small here to the line we made for the extra, extra small down here. I find it easiest to use a um, hip curve for this or a French curve. And you're just gonna match up the lines um, to where they sort of smooth out together. And that will be your cutting line. Notice I'm grading from this notch at the wrist all the way up to here. Okay, and that's it. We'll just highlight it to make it stand out for you. Now you're going to want to repeat this for all your other pattern pieces. So the back of hand, the cuff, and maybe even the finger and thumb tips. Um, but what we did here just now with drawing extra lines between sizes, this concept also applies to grading between sizes on the pattern. So let's go back to our back of hand piece. Now for grading in between sizes, in the pattern, you're going to use the same concept of drawing lines from one size to the other. Let's start with these. Um, these are my pattern pieces to fit my hands. Work's already been done. So I am a medium in width and a medium in length. However, I'm a small at the wrist. So you can just taper down to a size small here, but if I were to grade from the medium out here to the small over here where there's that corner that forms the wrist, then the mittens would be too short for me. It would start to taper in like right here, which is, you know, not good. Trust me, I tried it just to see how it would work. It wasn't the easiest to get my hand into. So instead, what I've done is I've done the medium for all of this, everything above the corners here, and then I tape down to the small and then everything below the wrist is a size small. See this is the forearm length I'm cutting at the small line here. Now when you are doing the palm pattern piece what you're going to do is make set well what I did was make size medium for everything above the wrist notches then below the wrist notches I graded down to a size small right where the uh, cuff would meet at the size small. So it looks kind of weird because it just swoops in and then down. But trust me, it works beautifully every time I make a pair. And it allows the mittens to be tight enough here that they don't slip down, but also loose enough up here that I can actually get my hands in easily. 
So I hope you found that helpful because it was a lot of information uh, really quickly. So if you need to, please feel free to pause and rewind. Um, you can also go to disparatedisciplines.com to see the video notes. And if you have any questions, uh, head on over to the forums, the Honeycrisp Mitten forums at disparatedisciplines.com, where you can ask questions and share photos of your mittens in progress. See you again soon. Next time, we'll be talking about conductive fabric.